Good day and welcome to our complete guide to installing and using Defender Application Guard with Chromium Edge, Google Chrome, and Firefox browsers. We also discuss uh, Internet Explorer. So let's get to it. What is Defender Application Guard? Well, Defender Application Guard is a really good option uh, to run programs in a very secure space that is separated from the host operating system, uh, thereby eliminating uh, potential attacks. For instance, uh, if you ran WannaCry uh, CryptoLocker program from a website running Application Guard, it uh, wouldn't be able to get to your host system, so it wouldn't encrypt anything. Uh, you'd simply close the browser and you'd be on your way. As far as the history goes, there's a little bit of uh, confusion here. So it used to be called Windows Defender Application Guard, but certainly in build uh, 2004, uh, which is the spring uh, 2020 update, it's now called Microsoft Defender Application Guard, as you can see here in the screenshot. So they're just changing the word Windows to Microsoft, uh, much like they're doing with Office. So for the purpose of getting through this, we're just calling it Application Guard. You can call it whatever you'd like. A lot of people call it WDAG, and other people call it MDAG. About the only other place that we've seen this used, other than the browsers, is in the Windows Sandbox, and we have a nice uh, explanation of how this works. So we're going to get to the details of how it actually works in just a minute, but let's get through some of the requirements because they're not quite as obvious as you'd think. Uh, so to get Application Guard to work, uh, basically it's any PC that's been manufactured in the last uh, four or five years. So 2015 and newer will do it. Um, but to be specific, that means at least a quad-core CPU, a 64-bit CPU, could be Intel or AMD, and it has to be capable of virtualization, which, again, almost everything is, uh, at least 8 gig of RAM and 5 gig of disk space. Uh, you also need to have Windows 10 Pro, Enterprise, or Education. Now, uh, this is an interesting little uh, tidbit. Um, this little question here of, does uh, Application Guard function differently in Windows 10 Pro versus Enterprise? Oh, you bet it does. In Windows 10 Pro, the only way you can get it to function is by launching it manually uh, and I'll show you that right now. So here's a Windows 10 Enterprise machine that I already have Application Guard installed on which we're going to show you in just a minute by the way so don't worry we're not skipping anything and uh, the way to bring it up manually is to press Control shift a or just click the settings here and click uh, new menu uh, sorry new Application Guard window and it'll bring it up and really the only way you can tell you're in an Application Guard window is this little icon right here. So you'll notice it's not here because this is just regular browsing. And anything I do here, that can see my uh, machine. That is not in a sandbox. This, however, is a uh, protected window. So yeah, anything that happens here stays here. Um, if I was to be infected or something were to try to get a hold of the machine uh, through this browser, uh, it would do nothing and I would simply be able to go, bye. Um, and uh, let's explain that a little bit more. Uh, first, we'll start out by explaining how to install Application Guard. It's very straightforward. Basically, just right-click on your Start button and select Apps and Features, then click Programs and Features, then click Turn Windows Features on and off, and then select whatever, depending on what build of Windows 10 you have. Uh, you may have it called Windows Defender Application Guard if it's a little bit older, or if it's a newer one, it'll be called Microsoft Defender Guard. Click uh, the check mark, click OK, uh, it'll grind away for a minute, then it will reboot. And really, the only thing you have to make in advance is that the CPU is capable of running uh, virtualized uh, processes. And um, so you just have to make sure that in your BIOS that's turned on. By the way, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's on by default and virtually everything that's corporate-y. So if you have a retail product, eh, maybe not, but very uh, unlikely to be off in a corporate product. Alternately, you can run this uh, very simple uh, PowerShell command line, right? Not very challenging. Um, you can also uh, install it using, uh, well, what was Intune, what is now called uh, Endpoint Manager. I'm going to skip that because most people don't care. Uh, but anyway, there's the instructions if you need it. And now we're down to the fun part, which is what are the settings? 
So uh, as I mentioned, it functions completely differently in Windows 10 Pro versus Windows 10 Enterprise. If you've got Windows 10 Pro, you can only launch it manually. If you've got Windows 10 Enterprise, you can set these GPOs. Uh, you can also configure it through SCCM. You can also configure it through Intune or Endpoint Manager, as it's now called. But most people will just use a GPO group policy. It will pick up uh, websites automatically. So what you'll do is you'll go in, you'll set these policies, then uh, the machine, at least for most people, will be set to, you know, the, the sites that you define as safe, it will run in, in normal mode. Anything you don't specify will uh, launch in application in an application guard window. So you can see that makes a lot of sense for people running enterprise, uh, but for people running pro, yeah, it's a giant pain. You have to train your users to manually launch that browser in application guard mode when they want it, uh, which is, you know, they're just not going to do it. Okay, so uh, how does application guard actually work? Well, look, we have a long, well, not long, but we have a longer explanation of it uh, on our, which you can see here, uh, how does, you know, how does application guard work? Uh, but here's the nut of it. Microsoft has four different container technologies. Now, this is going to get a bit technical, so I'll try to gloss it a bit, but it boils down to, look, if you're familiar with the virtual machines, you should get containers. So a virtual machine takes your hardware and virtualizes it, right? So you're running many, many uh, potentially, many, many machines on a single piece of hardware. Well, uh, if you think about it, uh, why are you running, uh, let's say they're all running Windows uh, 10 uh, Enterprise. We'll just pick on that version. It could be Windows Server, could be whatever, whatever version. Uh, why, if they're all running the same operating system, why are they running, uh, why are you installing it multiple times? Why don't they just sort of pull the core parts from the core operating system and be virtualized that way. Well, that's what containers are. So containers are virtualizing the operating system. And uh, to make a long story very short, Microsoft has four different types of containers. And what they've decided on is to use the uh, their, their second highest level here called Krypton. And uh, you don't have to know this, by the way, this is just interesting for people like me that are losers and wanna know how this stuff works. So it's not quite their very top, but it's pretty close. And what it does is almost run as a virtual machine. So uh, it's got a really cool feature here called Direct Map. Now, what Direct Map does is this. When you have an operating system that's uh, built in a container, a Windows container, it's only 18 megabytes in size, so it's tiny. And what it's doing is uh, copying the files from the host operating system whenever it needs them. That's Direct Map. Uh, so that's all the techno crap we're going to get into. You can read through the rest of this. Uh, the memory stuff is really cool as well. It's basically dynamically expanding memory for these things. It, it's just really cool. Um, and if you think, well, if it's all virtualized, won't I lose my settings when I, you know, say I like dark mode or something else? Won't I lose those settings? No, uh, they've really got the setup great. So what happens is when you uh, launch uh, an application guard, uh, app it copies all of your settings from the default to uh, this uh, this little virtual uh, virtualized container. Uh, so you think, well, if it's virtualized, how am I seeing it? Well, you're seeing it through a, a very very thin and very very tight uh, remote desktop uh, uh, tool that they've built that you and I can't see directly, but uh, it's all called programmatically. And what it does is less than normal RDP in an effort to keep you safe. In particular, the clipboard. So it'll only move text and images. If you were to grab a file from it, you couldn't paste it through uh, the remote, the, the RDP session. It just won't work. So this is going to get pretty weedy. So we're going to leave it at that. But just leave it, uh, leave your understanding at the RDP client is very thin, very light, purpose built, very very fast, and only uh, does a few things. It doesn't do all of the things that RDP clients normally do and that keeps you safe. That's a really all you need to know. So as you can see here, this is you working away. I'm working away, working away. You open up an application guard version of, let's say Microsoft Edge. It opens it up in this Hyper-V container. Uh, and uh, you can see here, well, it remote desktops back to your session, back to your uh, typical Windows desktop. So it looks to you like it's just another window, but it's not. Again, let's just leave it at, it keeps you safe. Now, uh, how do you actually get it to function? Well, 
uh, with uh, Chromium Edge, Credge as I like to call it, uh, it just works. Uh, however, again, assuming you are running Windows 10 Enterprise uh, or you're running Windows 10 Pro and you've launched it manually, those things work just as we've discussed. If you want to use it with Google Chrome or Firefox, you need to go uh, to their store and you need to get their extensions. And you can see here, Microsoft has a nice little article explaining it, but basically just go get the extension and plug it in. Um, I don't think there's much else you need to know about this. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so now let's take a look at what actually happens when you start uh, the application guard. And you'll notice, uh, looking at task manager here, that I have sorted by um, uh, CPU, you'll notice that uh, right now it's not doing very much. Uh, and uh, when I launch uh, Edge, even though I am not running in application guard mode, you'll notice that right at the top comes this uh, VMM mem, and uh, it's starting to use a fair amount of memory, about a, about a gig. And uh, typically it seems to start about 1.2, 1.3 gig. This is a bit lower. So that's, uh, that's a real issue because people always have their browser open, right? There's just never a time when people don't have it open. Um, now look what happens when we... So if I look, let's just search here. So we go into here. There we go, lovely. And nothing much happened. I can open up new tabs. Nothing much happens. Right, it's, uh, it plugs along and so on and so forth. Now if I go here and I select new application guard, so I launch it manually. Now this is in application guard mode, right? You can see that. And now when I run, there we go. And it's, it's creeping up, the, you know, memory's creeping up, CPU's creeping up. It's not drastic, but as you get going, it does add overhead, which is why they suggest, well, they tell you, you need to have quad core and eight gig of RAM. Okay, so you can just see that's crawling up and crawling up and crawling up. Let's go off to YouTube and just see what it does when it's actually got something intense. Ooh, well, there we go. Something a little more intense. Let's go to um, uh, Apple response to comments. Sure, no idea what that is. I don't really care. And you can see this is jumping up again. Get closer. So, And we'll finish up with um, how to use it with Internet Explorer. And uh, you think, geez, I didn't know it worked with Internet Explorer. Well, neither do I other than I found an article from Microsoft saying it does. Um, I'm not sure that it does. Uh, it may have done it in some beta, uh, but I can't figure it out. I can't find any real documentation explaining it. So uh, if it works with IE 11, uh, I still have not found it, uh, found how it works. So I think that's all we want to discuss today. If you have any questions or concerns, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.